that's a black hole. A border develops separating the black hole from the space around it. Once this border has been crossed, going into the black hole, even light cannot escape. Border diameter is determined by the weight of the compressed mass. A hole with the same mass as Earth would be merely two centimeters across, something the mass of the Sun, six kilometers. That's considered the size of the black hole. Black holes are created the instant stars die. Let's say a star 20 or more times larger than our sun reaches the end of its life and explodes. The star's own gravity then causes its remaining core to implode infinitely, becoming a purely gravitational force. When a black hole is born like this from the death of a star, its diameter is 50 kilometers at most. But one can find black holes of truly monstrous proportions, over 10 billion kilometers in diameter. Andrea Ghez is an expert on this invisible phenomenon of the black hole. It was when she saw the Apollo moon landing on TV that her interest in space was awakened. My biggest uh, objective in life when I was very young was to become a ballerina. <laughs> so um, I think I see things spinning in space now um, as opposed to myself. I, um, but yeah, your path is, uh, is uh, the path was unclear. Um, and today I view doing astronomy and studying the black hole as putting together one big puzzle. Donald Lyndon Bell predicted that a supermassive black hole lurks at the heart of every galaxy. Andrea Ghez tried to find such a black hole in our own Milky Way galaxy. Actually, the first thing that we're trying to do is watch how stars move. That's the key to finding that there's a black hole. Um, and the way you do this um, is by pointing your telescope at the center of the galaxy and using a technique that allows you to see the stars around the black hole. So here's the black hole. And what you want to do is we want to be able to see a star. You want to be able to see a star make a complete orbit around the center. Guess followed the movements of the stars for years, plotting their trajectories. If they were in fact orbiting some unseen object, then that would be proof of a black hole. The center of the Milky Way, however, is 26,000 light years from Earth. Ascertaining the movements of stars around a point so far off in space is no easy matter. Mauna Kea, Hawaii, home to several giant telescopes. Gez used one of the observatories on this summit, the Keck Observatory. The Keck has two of the largest telescopes in the world, with primary mirrors that are 10 meters in diameter. Gez's observations here began in 1995. But Gez and her team were not the only ones searching for a supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy. A European team based in the heart of Germany had also been hunting the same monster. The leader of these star trackers is Stefan Gelesen. We have a 10-meter telescope, we have an 8-meter telescope. So our telescope is a bit smaller, 
However, um, we are on the southern hemisphere where the galactic center is uh, visible uh, for more hours, so we can observe uh, from February to October. The European team conducts its observations at the Paranal Observatory in Chile. The VLT array there comprises four 8.2 meter telescopes. But even with such advanced technology, success is elusive. The problem is Earth's atmosphere. Atmospheric fluctuations blur the stars. April 2002, the European team installs epic-making new equipment. From the VLT at Paranal, they shoot laser beams into the night sky to measure and adjust for those atmospheric fluctuations. Their special equipment succeeds in doing just that. The new method is called adaptive optics. It brings the stars into focus. Corrected for atmospheric fluctuations, the stars shine much more clearly. Gez, who did not yet have adaptive optics, was at a disadvantage. She minimized atmospheric fluctuations by restricting exposure time in imaging the stars. Meticulously, she charted their movements. Success or failure depended on choosing the right stars to follow. At first, both teams were following a star designated S01. But Gez's attention was drawn to another star. Another star which people were very excited about in the, in the earliest days was SO1. It was the star that was moving fastest initially. But it was SO2 that as it got closer to the black hole has become the fastest moving star uh, that we've uh, known about. This graphic represents Geza's findings. Knowing that stars orbit the center of the galaxy was not enough to prove the existence of a black hole. In January of 2002, another star, designated SO2, was observed to be behaving strangely. It was executing a blindingly fast and tight orbit, clocked at 5,000 kilometers per second, as if being swung violently around and around. These were incredibly exciting times because, um, of course, at every stage of this uh, experiment, people said, you can't do it or what you're seeing isn't um, what you should be seeing. So we initially saw that they were moving fast and people said, well, these stars aren't bound to the galaxy. You're not going to see them curve. Yet SO2 was indeed curving in a rapid orbit. This is an actual imaging sequence. Exhaustive analysis showed it to be a giant star with a mass equivalent to 10 suns. The only thing that can make stars move that fast is a lot of mass. These stars are moving because there's a lot of gr um, gravity. And the only thing that makes that much gravity in that small a space is a supermassive black hole. With their adaptive optics, the strange behavior of SO2 had not escaped the notice of the European team either. They succeeded in imaging SO2 at around the same time.
Of course, that was the moment everybody was